good weekend, all. I wrap Steen of Linen Associates with your Spider ETF weekly wrap up, and this is for Saturday, October 16th, 2021. Now, before we get too far, if you like these, do me a favor, cost you nothing. Give a thumbs up on YouTube, it helps our rankings, helps us with our advertising there, gets better positions. At the end of this, I'm going to be putting on my ad about the Enhanced Bollinger Band course. And before you just turn that off, if you're a market technician and you don't understand my view on Bollinger Bands, you're missing the boat. It's like getting a master's degree in them. It takes you well beyond what John Bollinger did, takes you to the next level. I love them in spiders and ETFs, so you decide what you're going to do. All right, as you can take a look at everything, Amazon gained back quite a bit, $100 this uh, on Friday. That's pretty important. Uh, the problem, of course, for Amazon is what's going on with their size. They're in everything. I had a friend stop me today, and he said, there is a rumor within the steel industry as to how much steel affiliates of Amazon are accumulating. I said, why are they in steel? He told me that's what he's heard. I don't know if there's truth or not, but their size generates a lot of talk. The euro came back a little bit gold, down a bit on Friday. Now, when you take a look at the gold charts on the weekly and monthly basis, it's nice that the dailies came up and they did their job. They got to the upper Bollinger Band. But they're not in breakout territory on the weekly or the monthly yet. That's going to take a little more time. Time is gold's friend here. I don't think this is false yet. We'll see what goes on. Because nobody knows, is this, tra is this inflation transitory or sticky? Parts of it are sticky. If you think that giving people higher wages is transitory, boy, you've missed the boat. Now the question is inflation. How much of this and what parts of it are sticky versus the transitory? When we look at the tech sector, you were in a correction and you got a bounce. Now, because this is a weekly chart, you can see you had almost two months of breaking and you got one month of a bounce. You came up from a high here of 160.13, fell $14 roughly, came back up, and where are you? Well, you're just over the 18-day average of closes, so the bias is up, but the trend, there is none. Why? The definition of an uptrend should be higher highs, higher lows. Instead, you got a higher high, lower low versus that. The swing line helps you determine those areas. You can learn about swing lines in my charting course. Go under uh, the education section of our website. Then we get to the XLK in the Bollinger Bands. You're neither near the top nor the bottom. When you hit it back here and here, you fell sharply. That's why I want you to understand how to work with Bollinger Bands. So what would I call this so far? Pretty neutral chart. Momentum had been pointing down, it's flattening out. So I see a, a chart that has gone neutral and nothing beyond that on a weekly basis. Now, PAVE has picked up again, and there's reasons for this that make sense. That $3.5 trillion reconstruction, reconciliation bill, whatever the heck they want to call it, because the name changes in every newspaper I read, it's coming alive again. Why? Because they're going to drop so much. That's not $3.5 trillion anymore. By the time they take this, it'll be closer to 2 than anything else. If they think even 3 will get through, boom! Never going to happen. Two, five, I doubt it. One, five to two, very realistic. Uh, if they can get enough of the what? They got to not only keep their party, they're going to have to get some Republicans to throw in on that. We'll see if they can do it. But you're caught in sideways action. This is called marking time. So you get areas where you get into an uptrend, you run into the upper Bollinger Band, you came down. Notice you didn't want to hit that, but you're sort of stuck here. If I had to give it a, a reading, it's more bullish than bearish, but unexciting. In XLI, the industrial sector, you ended this trend down, and I can walk you through that right here. Lower highs, lower lows into that Bollinger Band, found its support. Out of that, now are we in anything? No. You have a higher high, lower low pattern. I don't see anything to do just there yet. The energy sector, for my money, you're at the upper Bollinger Band. So long. I know that all the news over the weekend that all week was bullish. I think the pros in XLE are dumping it. Why? If you go back and you look what Bollinger Bands do, they give you an area of where the market 
backs off. Now, is that a bearishness? No, that's not what I'm saying. It's one thing to come out and long. You just challenge the 200-day average in the upper Bollinger Band. Within two weeks or so, it typically is back down from there on a weekly chart. We'll see if I'm right or wrong. In SPY, okay. So what we've done is we ended, and I want you to see this. We were in correction right through here, came down. Did we take out that low? No, we did not, as it turns out. We spent one, two weeks under, actually parts of three weeks under that 18-day average. We hadn't done that before. You had done it two, but not three. So that's a sign that the market weakening a bit. Oh, yeah. What else is it a sign? When you lost the embedded reading right here, the market went into what I predict was a corrective mood, which often results in prices going back to the 18-week moving average of closes to find support. It's exactly what it did, and it's fought its battle there. If the market can rally up again, look for very stiff resistance at 456 50, right in that area. It wouldn't surprise me you just battle around right here for a little bit. Emerging markets, it's nice that they bounced. They've done this repeatedly against the lower Bollinger Band. They go to the 18-day average and they die there. I don't think this time is going to be much different. The weekly chart is not saying that this is a place to jump in. In gold, now this is where we get to uh, what I was talking about. So gold comes down starts playing again, the word is again, repeated, at the 100-day average, the lower Bollinger Bands. Do you see that? Gets its bounce, goes back to the 18, did I say day average? It's 18-week average. I'm so used to the daily charts. I apologize for that. And pulling back now to that area there. We have the trend up as measured by the swing line, but we refuse, in terms of we being the market, it refuses to close over the 18-week moving average of closes. That's what's required to get the market friendly as long as you keep this pattern here. Momentum has gone flat. Again, nice to have gotten the bounce on the daily charts, real nice. But for the longer term, it's not in play yet. Gold miners, follow me. Lower highs, lower lows, oversold. Watch the embedded reading. This was October 8th. You lose it, you typically go back to the 18-week average to regroup. It's exactly what the market did this week. No, that is not a buy signal. Can it become one? No. You've got a lower and low. Even if you rally through this, you got the 100-week average waiting for you. You're here. And worse, you end up with a lower and low, maybe a higher high pattern. No. As a chartist, I'm not interested. Now, Kathy, Kathy Woods, that is, of ARC fame, her... Prices came down here the week of October 1st. I was with you that weekend, and I said, oversold down to the lower band. And this is, again, you've got to learn how to take that enhanced Bollinger Band course I have. This is where I predict the pros are going to cover their shorts. doesn't have to be this exact number, but you're there. Market drops down. Oh, boy, I'm worried. I'm not so worried. Market coming up. Resistance back here. The traders... Traders are probably still bearish this. They're probably looking at that 120 area as a go short area. You're getting out of uh, an oversold condition, getting a bounce. You'd have to get back over here, this 126.23 area, to negate that downtrend. Amazon, this is just a bounce, my friends. I, I pointed out to you all week, we keep hearing everybody on every news station I'm listening to in Chicago, including the national news, warning you that if you're going to go out and get your kids the toys, you want to get that certain something in clothing, whatever, go get it now. So how much forward sales is being done and how much of that's going to take away from Christmas? I don't know. We certainly know that there's the Black Friday and everybody waits on that event to buy. But how much do you have in storage of these goods? I don't know. How much is sitting out there outside the port of Los Angeles, uh, San Diego, as the market's just looking at all those ships out there with all those goods? You know, you bring that ship in, it doesn't unload itself in a couple of hours. There's thousands of containers you have to deal with in all these ships. So... A lot going on. Look for some resistance up here. Nothing yet bullish on that chart on a weekly basis. Apple. 
Apple's still getting all the play, people talking about it. I personally don't like the Apple 13. I was listening to Tom Keen on Bloomberg, how everybody wants to own one, they can't get them. Why? You gotta be a camera buff. For another longer battery life, come on, with these new superchargers, I'm buying them on Amazon for $16. I lay my phone on it, an iPhone 10. My wife's got the new one, I have the old one. Um, it charges like that. It's instant. I mean, as I'm talking and doing my work, I pick it up, it's back to 90%. That's fine. I don't have to go out and get a phone that doesn't have the features I want. Am I already a candidate for the 14 from all the things I'm reading? You can count on it. Will I have to pay more because I don't uh, upgrade every two years? Yeah, so what? In my scheme of things, it doesn't matter. I use my phone a lot, but those new features don't do it. And, ah, that 5G is a bunch of you-know-what. It's not around everywhere. Higher high, lower low, fighting its battle right there. <coughs> so TLT, why do you want to be short against the lower Bollinger Band? That explains the bounce to me. Okay, I still think this rally is going to come up and set up a bearish pattern where you get short for the long pull. Why? Because I do believe interest rates are going to creep higher for the next two years. I think that we will say goodbye to the COVID pandemic. I think that the medicine, be it the Merck new pill that they're coming out, a super pill, uh, Moderna, Pfizer, all these great things that are coming out. And I hate to say this, and I, I, I really hate to say it. The people that don't want to get vaccinated, getting the vaccine, their immune system develops the antibodies, and they're no longer uh, the, the carrier they could have been. All that combination will work in the favor of this unless there's another variant that comes out that none of this works on. That's always the fear. But I, I get it. I get the bounce here. But I'm not buying the fact that the economies can't do better. All this pent-up demand, come on. I noticed that, uh, I think it's Barry, that was the big short in Tesla threw in the towel over the weekend. This chart's not over. I mean, Tesla's not just a car company. That's what people don't get. It's... Uh, it's way more than that. It's brains. I, my friend next door comes running up to me, and he owns a lot of Bitcoins. And he comes up and he goes, you know how he's making his money right now? Uh, and he's not a trader. He's a tradesman. Got that? And he's hit it. He's hit it big. And comes up, sees me. I read, you know what I've been doing to make money? I stopped thinking. Every time tweet, uh, Musk twits on buying some of these other coins, he rushes, buys them, watches the chart a little bit. A tr he's not much of a chartist, I can promise you this. And he's dumping some occasionally. Others he holds, that's it. He's always giving me a new tip. I make you a promise I've never bought one. Will I regret it? Probably. But I seem to be comfortable doing what I do. And you can see how the market just running. It's still embedded. That's a powerful chart. Excuse me, that's my news. By the way, that is the news that I use on this. Now, as I told you, one of the things that I think you should be doing is looking hard at Bollinger Bands. You hear me talking. This is called running the upper Bollinger Band. As you can see, the market got up. I would have told clients take half their profit, and now you're sitting, and then I teach them how to let the market run on that. Want to learn this? Take a look at this.